Hello and welcome back to the Talk Norwich City podcast for the 56th episode and welcome him back everyone's favourite Frenchman, it's Mr Cedric Anselm. <laughs> Cedric, it is an absolute pleasure to have you back, my no, friend. Thank you for inviting me. I love, I love that announcement. He is, though, isn't he? He is, it's very it's true. Cedric Frenchman, now you probably only know one, and it's me. <laughs> <laughs> but you're still the favourite. Oh, thank you. Um, That's thank still you. a big deal. And yeah. you know what, when, when Cedric walked through into your, into your lovely new house, Chris, you said, I look like a Frenchman. I, yeah, I'm you do. that. You do do. You do just need some onions around your neck. And maybe, yeah. yeah, maybe a berry as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, maybe and, you could and, sort them out with And one. maybe put two stars in here as well. Uh, we don't want to go. Uh, sorry, sorry. I just, you know, throw that. But I like that France has stars with actual meaning, unlike yeah. some teams we know kind of just put stars for. Yeah. Any reason. yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll gloss over that. It must have been a fantastic <laughs> summer for you so far. I had a fantastic World summer. Cup winners. Yep. Birmingham away, yes. called in last minute, yes. lovely sun, Cedric, you're living the dream. Yeah, as I said, it's, it's been a fantastic uh, summer. Mm. Um, move house as well, you forgot. Mm. Um, and I was due to move on the, on the day of uh, Birmingham City away, and uh, uh, managed to move the next day. But yeah, no, it was good. So you, good so, summer so far. So you're you know, telling... we, we're still in the middle of the summer, so... Yeah, I keep forgetting that. So, um, so yeah, let's hope that carry on. So, so are you telling me that you were moving house... A certain Rob Butler calls you up at nine o'clock in the morning and goes, Cedric, we need you. We need you big time. Well, he didn't say we need you. He just said, well, we have someone just dropped off. Uh, yeah. Can you do it? You don't have to say yes, but can you do it? <laughs> what is he like, that Rob Butler, eh? Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a lovely lad. We love him. Um, Chris, you were also at Birmingham. We haven't really chatted since then. Yeah. An interesting start. It's certainly been an entertaining start to the season. Well, yeah, no, absolutely. I think I think both games, you, you certainly can't say it's not been entertaining. I think a lot of um, Norwich fans have been kind of waiting to pounce on the fact that it's, that it's been negative. I thought that our performance away at Birmingham was excellent, mm. to be fair. Um, I, I don't think we were... Um, the performance was excellent. The result wasn't excellent. I thought that we, we ground out something that we didn't deserve, and, that, and that's why I put it in that box. Um but but of course, um, to 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 do what we did in the last game is very frustrating. So I get why I get why people are frustrated. Um, but I mean, luckily I wasn't at the West Brom game. If not, I think I probably would have been a bit more hardcore about it. But I've not. Yeah. I've been able to say in my head, there's two massive gaffes in there that you'll probably get once a season, mm. and we had them both in the same game. In my opinion, that's unlucky. Be interested to get Cedric's thoughts mm. on that. But you know, you, you don't, you only see a goalkeeper make that mistake once all season. We hope you you do. You don't see a goalkeeper make that make that mistake more once, apart from Carrius from Liverpool. Do, Jordan Rhodes, you know, not, not scoring that pen again. You you only see that once a season for me. Yeah, to, to coming back to your point of uh, mistake of goalkeepers, you know, thinking no long time ago in the World Cup quarter final of the World Cup, France v Uruguay. Strike from Griezmann, you're going, a well, goalkeeper just make a mistake. Exactly the same that yesterday. So, you know, it's part of the game, fortunately. I mean, Cedric, you've seen both games now, that really dramatic draw at Birmingham, in which we weren't convinced, but we looked really good at times. And probably yesterday, we actually, the performance on the whole was better, but we didn't come out with a win. Is that a worry or is there promising signs to take? I think it's not worried. I think, he, I think when everything will click together, I don't think we will lose the games. Um, mm. You know, if we look at the start of last year, we had Fulham away where we drew 1-1. We yep. didn't play particularly very well. And then we received Sunderland at home and we lost 3-1. Um, and this year is probably the same scenario. We went to Birmingham with 71% of, of position. Didn't create that many chances. Um, but Birmingham didn't give us, they didn't sort of come out and give us any sort of, uh, 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 to give us a game, basically. Mm. I think they've done their own work, obviously. Um, and I mentioned on here when I was on the radio last week where Gary Monk probably uh, didn't want to put any water before the game to make the pitch a bit more wet, where, you know, uh, the pitch was very dry. It felt mm. like playing a football game in a desert. <laughs> Honestly, it was so dry. The ball was sticky. And, and you could see, like, only a few times you play a sideway ball when it get caught. Um, yes, it's a disappointing result at Webb Birmingham, but also you feel like a win as well because you score so late into the game where, you know, I believe last year we'll probably never come back to a 1-0 or 2-1 because we went behind twice in that game against a team who are very, very difficult, especially when 
you fall behind in terms mm. of the results. The way Birmingham was set up, you know, they didn't give us anything. They didn't want to play the game. Um, just you know, yeah, it was it was mm. it was a disappointing result, but it fell a win. Uh, and yesterday, first half played very well. Um, we should have been two or three one up yeah. half time easily in in my view. Second half, um, you know, West Brom manager make some couple changes. Mm. You could see that in the second half, the way they starting West Brom was a lot different. They were closing uh, very high quickly, uh, and to stop Norwich, uh, are playing their sort of like the way he wants to play from the back, the build up in midfield and going forward. West Brom would close them down so quick. They didn't have time to. To, to, to have that time on the ball, to make that lovely sideway ball to Teti. And, and that, I think that was the, the change in second half. And obviously you start second half, you concede well in the first minute or second mm. minute through a mistake. You yeah, know. exactly. Uh, but even coming back to the first goal of West Brom, it was the only attack they, they had in the first half. Yeah. Yeah. It was just a quality crossing. Ben Marshall, obviously, <coughs> position-wise, just that. No right. Um, but to be fair, Gale have a fantastic touch and it's definitely a penalty. I mean, Chris... At Birmingham, we saw a midfield duo of Tete and Tribal, arguably probably going to be our midfield in most away games this season. A slightly more defensive but solid midfield. Yeah. And I think for the majority that worked and Farker then changed it. Yesterday we saw um, Leitner next to Tete. next to Tete and McLean was in there as well. A slightly more combative midfield, you yeah. could say. I feel like the pleasing thing this season is it seems like we have more options. And in terms of options... Mm options to change games in, mm. in the way we want yeah no I, I agree and I think you know just just kind of not to answer that question straight away I think that Norwich are actually got they, they've got a very good problem which is that we just need to shore up the defence mm. last season we couldn't score for Toffee and now we can definitely score Hernandez looks venomous you know even Sabeni comes on and he just adds something completely different um, but for me the, with the Tete and the, and the tribal situation I don't know what it is at the moment, but I've just seen Tete play at Birmingham. He's not had that many, he's not had any minutes pre-season, in fact. He's played two games, and I'm just not turned on by him. I'm just not feeling it. I think that I'd much rather see Tribal in there with, with Thompson. Okay. Um, I think the criticism of Leitner um, is is quite poor. because Leitner was good, yes. I think, uh, look, ultimately, he brings that edge to us like Madison did. Give the guy time, start him in football matches, and it will come right mm. in the end. Um as I said, like you know, we've just been so unlucky in the last two games, in my opinion. Like the, the goals that we conceded have been. I mean, well, I, I think the positive things in, in in from last year and this year, you know, we only came into our second game of a, of a, of, a, of the season. Is mm. is I think um, uh, Daniel Farker, Birmingham away, he make his change very quickly yes, when we fall yes. when we fall behind. Yeah, you know, and the minute he make his change so quickly in the second half. You know, Letner when he came on, McLean when he came on, they can really change the philosophy of the game, the positivity and the energy mm. they just give to all the mm. others who felt obviously very tried mm. on a very yeah. hot day. Can really change the game. And yesterday, Letner played very well. I think he was very good. Yeah. McLean, he's got something about him. And and also Ben Marshall on the right hand side is giving you know, that option that that going forward that we didn't mm. really have that, that last year. Yeah. You know, and he's more solidly, I would say, better than Pinto defensively. Yeah. I, I think I think what Norwich have got now is an edge to them, and I think that last season, certainly at the beginning of, of the season, and we had a, you know two or three really quite poor patches. We are now bringing the game to the opponents, which is exactly what Daniel Farker said he would bring when he turned up at Norwich City Football Club. That we would bring the game to opponents. You can now see that, and that's why I'm okay with the draw and a loss because we're kind of just experimenting, mm. experimenting with a few options. I'm just uh, not to be negative straight away. I'm, I'm just I'm seeing so many people on Twitter mm. saying Daniel Farker's not the right man for the job. Lightness poor. Why are we playing him? But then they were so delighted that he signed. I just think a lot of people are already getting their, their wick is far too short. We played two games. As I've said already, we've we've made two mistakes that you won't see for the rest of the season. You just won't see them for the rest of the season. Honestly, I'll be stunned if Tim Krul makes another mistake like that this season. Obviously, the positive. You know, people say to me, "Is any positive?" You know, as I said earlier, when we come back from last year, uh, Fulham away, we drew one-one. Sunderland at home, we lost three-one. We scored two goals, conceded four. This year we score what? Uh, three yesterday, two away. You know, five goals. Yeah, yeah we conceded a lot, yeah. a lot bit more. But it's a positivity. You know, I, mm -hmm. I I personally think when the summer, the transfer, the players been bringing to the club, 
is a lot more balanced squad yeah. in terms of so agree. technically much better than last year. Yeah. Last year the base was too much based on one player, mm. and when when Daniel Farker was making his changes, the player is bringing into the pl- the pitch was not as good as he has in the yeah, first no eleven. Plan B. Absolutely, you know. But this year he's got as much quality on the bench that he's got on, on the start eleven, mm-hmm. and I think that is a massive plus. And and what we think is is a lot of players been missing yesterday. Definitely. You know, you got Ash Lack is not there, very good German player. Um, you got Mario Francis, you still have to come. You got Godfrey. Very pleased for Louis Thompson, obviously, yesterday to make his debut because obviously, you know, he's been injured for two years, mm. but he looked, you know, he looked like he's a new signing. Yeah. Mm. He give that, 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 that freshness to the mm. squad. For me, that it's the new, and I said it after, the, after Birmingham in, the, in our post match reaction. And you got Jamal back, as well to come back. The mm. new players, for me, are, are way outperforming the older players that we've got. Mm. And that's the exciting thing. It's fresh. And, and when the opposition are coming up against us, yes, they can prepare, but they can only do it off the basis of two games because we're such a different team now. Um, I'm not banging the drum of, of you know patience, 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 but I am banging the drum of we're two games in. It's definitely too early but to criticise. If, if you look at the way we played yesterday in the first half against West Brom, where technically... West Brom are meant to be going up, as, they're meant to be going up yeah, straight they, away. They right? must be the favourite to go up, you know, and we couldn't really take them... Apart yesterday in the first half, yeah. Um, but you know they all Premier League statue players uh, was what they think. But mm. it, it's, it's hard for for a club to come down to Championship because they still think that they can come into a game and just sort mm. of get the three point and go yeah. away. You know, Championship level is not that. The I real mean, test, the the real test, Jack, mm. is Sheffield United. I mean, I I completely both agree with you. I'm I'm still feeling positive, mm. and I just wanted to pick up on on when you said unlucky about yesterday. I do agree to a certain extent. But let's break down the goals. First goal, Pinto nowhere to be seen to shut the cross down. Marshall misjudges it. That's our fault. Second goal, uh, Tib Krul drops it into his own net. Third goal, Matt Phillips completely not picked up. From um, yeah, but the, from the, from deep and the fourth goal, two two chances to try and clear a corner, neither of them were cleared. So four goals, all our fault. But the third one, if you really think clearly, Teddy lost the ball. He trying to do a, a Johan Cruyff yeah. in his own half yeah. and get caught. So it's our fault though. A lot of goals is is, diff- is an individual mistakes. Yeah, but it's it's part of the game. It's the base of the game. You know, it's the individual mistakes. You know, la- last week in Birmingham, you know. Uh, no, sorry. The first, the first half yesterday, mm. the first goal of Westman is the only attack Westman had. But we, one cross, and is that the worry that we couldn't defend it because we saw that a lot last season as well? Have it's anything so actually early, changed? So no, no, I'm just saying. I'm just throwing out there. We were criticising individual we... mistakes last season. We saw four of them yesterday. Yeah. However, the the mindset is completely different. I get that because on the whole, the performance was good. But I don't think it's unlucky. No, 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 but no. no. Before... The keeper mistake is unlucky. It, yeah. The keeper mistake is unlucky. Yes, it was his fault. Mate, that doesn't happen again. And Jordan Rhodes but where not would... scoring. Where he's would... given in the eyes. Another goalkeeper, Jack, would have fallen for that. Yes, it was a weak penalty I, I, and it I... wasn't good enough. But, mate, there's our extra goal. There's two. They're, they're unlucky. You know me. I hate blaming luck. But that those two things there, they are but unlucky. I think for the penalty, he was waiting the last second where the keeper was yeah. going to go. And, unfortunately, he went to the right you know where he was going to put the ball, um, but I, I don't think you know the, the crossing, the crossing on the first, the first goal. Where was Pinto? You know, you know, I, I, I come back to that. Yeah, where is Pinto first? But if you think we played the ball forward, Hernandez lost the ball on the edge of their, 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 their box. Mm-hmm. They had all the pitch to cover to come back. The quality of the ball was outstanding. Yeah, that was outstanding. Ben, Ben Marshall, Marshall, he was, you know, the ball was just sort of flat. Like, about yeah. that, yeah, just, yeah. just behind. But you know, it's just what you it's what you do when you play against top players. Mm. Them players, West Brom, they come back down from the Premier League. They got Premier League mm. statue, so the quality was going to be better. Mm. That crossing from the first half, you, I didn't see any from Birmingham players crossing that kind of a ball. Yeah. So is that quality of of that knowledge need to get but, it? But West Brom were just as shoddy as us. I thought the game could have swung both ways. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, again, not that it's no. I know it's ifs and buts. But if we score that penalty, for me, game over. Oh, yeah, 100%. Because West Brom's confidence was absolutely on the floor at that point. And, and, I, and I thought we'd go on to win the game before we conceded the second. I yeah. think the second goal killed us. But as long as we both think that the individual mistakes will be cut out, then, it is, yeah. then I'm fine with it that. Will. They have to. They have to. This way is, is, is a positive and a negative. It's where Daniel Farker will probably watch the game again yeah. and, and, and probably rectify on the training pitch. But on the whole, I agree. The system looks looks far better. Now, there's been we're filming this on a Sunday, a day earlier than we usually do. There's been a bit of transfer activity today. Uh, Remy Matthews has gone to Bolton. 
loan deal uh, to be made permanent if they want to in January. Um, Chris, we, we've spoken about Remy Matthews a lot. We spoke about it a lot on the on the um, podcast with, with Rob Butler. Tim Krul yesterday makes a few mistakes, arguably made a mistake at Birmingham as well. What do we think about Remy Matthews? I know you're so sore about it. Um, look, Remy, a lot of time, a lot of respect. Love the fact that he's a Norfolk boy, born and bred. Love the fact that he's a, he's a massive Norwich fan. Great guy off the pitch. Arguably a very, very good goalkeeper on the pitch as well. Uh, I think it's that classic situation. Um, we've had it with a lot of Norwich City goalkeepers. Well, this isn't just Remy Matthews, right? We've had this with Jed Steer. We've had this with Declan Rudd, where we've yeah. had John Ruddy in front of him. Mm. Yeah, you know. But beforehand, we've had Robert Green in front of someone else. We've had, Marshall. you know, we've had Fraser Forster in front of. I think he was in front of Declan Rudd, right? Mm. These are fantastic goalkeepers that are stopping them from getting in. Categorically, factually speaking, sorry to say it. Tim Krull is a better goalkeeper than Remy Matthews. Mm. He's got a lot to prove. I love him to bits. But I'm so pleased. Let's take Norwich City out of this. Great move for Remy. I hope that he smashes it. And I'm so, so pleased that he's made the decision to leave now to get games of football. And, you know, obviously for it to be made permanent in January is brilliant. It's great for Remy. I'm so pleased because he now has the opportunity to prove to the Norwich City board that, that they've made the wrong decision. For me... They've not made the wrong decision for Norwich City Football Club. And I think that actually, overall, this is best for Remy. It is yeah. best for Remy that he goes. Cedric, are you slightly disappointed that a goalkeeper that's been here for 15 years, had successful loan spells in League One in the SPL, was never given the chance to prove himself when maybe promised he would have been? I don't know if he's been promised. I don't know if he's been promised. Just out there. To, to, to him, but <laughs> love your questions there. <laughs> maybe been promised. Yeah, I don't know if he's been promised, uh, but. You know, the, the, the goalkeeper position is such an individual position because yeah. if you think, when we when we look at uh, the warm-up before each game, mm. keeper do their warm-up on their own. They're not part of the mm. other players. So it's a very difficult situation. And I'm, and I'm very pleased for Remy, obviously. He's final club, Bolton, mm. championship level. Mm. You know, he's going to have a lot of work to do you know, this year because Bolton just managed, managed to save themselves last year on yeah. the last couple of games. But... You know, it's always difficult to see a, a, a product uh, from a club. You know, he's been here for a long time to, to, to go. But I agree with, with Chris, you know, Tim Cole has got the experience. He's an international Dutch or where an inter- Yes, he had a bad injury, but he still has got that, that experience. And, and, and for a goalkeeper to gain that experience, sometimes it's to move away mm. from your, 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 your club. Mm. You know, a, a, a you know, club has just formed you. But it's a great move for him. Very, very good move. Um, how do you feel about it? Because you're his mate. Let's cut look, the crap, I, I, Jack. But you how think, do you feel about it? Do you think it? he's been promised to play in Norwich? Well, look, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> look, I've heard what I've heard. Um, I think he should have been given a chance. If he wouldn't have, if he hadn't have performed, do you, do fine. You, do you think right he's been on. given a chance in the preseason, and, and then obviously the people realise? Great comment, Cedric. People well, realise what he's done. Look, a lot all, of I'm saying, all I'm he's saying, done Cedric, a lot of in all I'm saying, Cedric, is a, is a Tim Krul transfer doesn't happen overnight he's been told one thing Tim Krul has been happening behind the scenes for me that doesn't sit very well but fully behind Tim Krul I agree I think he is an established keeper I'm fully behind him best of luck to Remy linking up with Yannick Lutz. how do you, how, how do you feel about obviously Tim Krul's mistake yesterday after your comment no you comment. Said that no I comment. actually you know what <laughs> I'm just going to put this in my personal ground now actually just to draw just to put another grenade in the situation I think with both Tim Krul and Remy Matthews doesn't this shine so well on just how good Angus was for us? Yeah, yeah? because Angus doesn't make that mistake, and and Angus literally he only had one shaky game against Ipswich all season, and there was tons of pressure. And doesn't that shine so much on just how good Angus is? Yeah, Ooh. no, hundred definitely agree. Uh, we're going to get to the Twitter questions early. Thank you to everyone who always tweets in. Um, Tom Cash, questions. Tom Cash, yeah, early. Um, <laughs> he's, his bio his results day is approaching faster than Pookie's hairline is receding <laughs> interesting from Tom Cash um, he says with Chris's previous Christmas deadline you, oh. you made it very clear last year Here we go. what is Chris's deadline for this year by the way Daniel Farker got out of that by the skin of his teeth the skin of his teeth yeah. because he strung together five games I think all the way from home yeah. I think we'd beat Reading away when Madison scored that worldy free yeah. kick yeah, yeah. We, we, we beat Ipswich we, we beat some Borough yeah we beat some Birmingham yeah 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 away from home big results 
skin of his teeth, James Madison. Now, I want to make it clear, I'm not, you know, Farker out. I'm definitely not that. But all I'm saying is this season, my wick is shorter. It's not get him out after two games. I'm not setting a deadline as such because um, I know that that can come back to bite me on the bum. But at the moment, I don't really have much to complain about. We're two games in. We've got a point away from home. We've lost at home, which is disappointing, but arguably to one of the promotion favourites. For me, it's it's too early to say. It is too early to say. So in terms of setting a deadline, I don't want to do it because I just think it's feeding that negativity. Cedric, Tom's also asked what, what sort of Cedric's deadline. Stuart Webber made it very clear when he appointed Daniel Farker that this is a replaceable system. If Farker isn't performing, it's very easy to drop him and bring someone else in. How long do you give it? Because last season we said, well, it's transition. Let's give him time. We've done that. This season, it's more about results, I think, and it's less about how we're playing. Yeah. If we're 10 games in, and I don't know, we're mid-table, I don't know. Where, where, where do you want to see us by Christmas? And at that point... Well, wh- wh- where we were last year by Christmas, mm. that is where obviously you won't be ahead of where we were last year. So you mean like you, you're moving in the right way. The, the, the thing for me is about Daniel Farker is I hope he have learned his mistake from last year. First mm. and foremost, uh, because I think um, Stuart Weber will probably acknowledge that, um, and and probably do an overview probably around Christmas with the manager and mm. see if he has learned from the mistake, and and then he will make, probably make that decision. But so far, I think I think he need a bit more, more time. You know, which is second game in the in the in the, in the league, uh, in the, in the season. Uh, you know, clearly is a lot more positive uh, than last year. It's more more quality players to pick. In, in the start eleven and even on the bench, and then, let, and then let's forget he's got Majavis as well to come back from injury. Oh yeah, you know, um, but yeah, it's too early to say. I mean, let me chi- let me chime in on that because Cedric brings out a brilliant point about you know that Daniel Farke has he learned from his mistakes? Absolutely, he has because he's bringing on not one but two substitutions, nice and early at Birmingham, yeah. which definitely changed the game. In fact. They are the reason why we got something out of that game. McLean, for example, one of the main reasons why we got something out of the game. And also, you can't moan about either of the teams that he's put out. I, I just don't think you can. Um, you know, I, I think that the, he's, the, the, his style of football this season has been fine. It's been entertaining. Yeah. Individual mistakes have let him down. Mm. I don't think you could, the only thing you can moan about with regards to the manager is why on earth is he wearing a jacket in the middle of summer? <laughs> Apart from that, that was you can't. Yeah, but you can't. You can't. You just simply can't moan at Daniel Farker at the moment. It, he has done everything he can as the head coach to try and put his stamp on the football that we're playing. The reason why I got irate last season is we were not making changes early enough, and also the players that he were putting out. He was putting out on the pitch were wrong. They weren't making an impact on the game. At the moment, he's doing absolutely nothing wrong. It's just down to individual errors. As soon as you sort that out, it should be fine. The only thing I can see creeping in slightly, which could let him down, but that's just my personal opinion, is Tete. I think he's going with Tete for experience, and I think he should go with Tete, for example, against Ipswich, because we need that experience. But as we've seen with these fresh players that we're bringing in, I don't think we need as much experience as maybe Daniel Farker could be thinking, but I think Cedric's made a great point. Has he learned from last season already? Absolutely yes. But in terms of the expectancy of where we should be at the end, uh, you know, midway through, and definitely the end of the season, I still think we should be in and around the playoffs. I think we, I definitely yeah. think we're good enough. We're the the early team. contenders. I look at the teams in this league that, that have played the initial games. I think Villa will be up there again. I think Borough will be up there again. I think Leeds United have got a great chance of winning the league, and I think Sheffield United as well. Those are my four teams that I'm worried about playing. Mm. Apart from that, I think Norwich can beat anyone. Mm. I really do. Ah, for us as well. You're sorry. No, Nottingham Forest, I will add them as well. Yeah. In the top five. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Cedric, I suppose I completely agree with Chris. The most pleasing thing for me, and you've seen us at Birmingham, you were there yesterday. Every time we go forwards, and that's on a regular basis, we look like doing something. Yeah. Last yes, season, yes, every time yes. we went forwards, I thought, well, we're just going to pass it sideways and lose it all. Yesterday, it was edge of your seat stuff for the majority of the 90 minutes, wasn't it? Yeah, no, going forward, T3 is a breath of fresh air. Last year, as you mentioned, we, we used to go forward and, and, and get some area of the pitch where we could have crossed the ball. Mm. No, we didn't cross the ball. We just wanted to come back and play sideways and come back more central and go the other side and come back more central. Mm. This year is more, it's more penetration going forward. I think, I think the key player this year, for me personally, above any else, any other player who's been signed, is Pookie. 
Mm, so yeah, yeah, okay. And you know, this looked perfectly. I'm not sure if you've seen this, but Will yeah. asks, uh, sorry, Pookie Pie asks, <laughs> um, could Pookie be an important figure this season? He's, he's, he's already been uh, very important to the system that Leonard Farker wants to play in the last two games. Uh, you can see that he is dropping off in them pockets mm. where it's very difficult for defender to to go in them area because if he if he move in that area where Pookie dropped, mm. he's leaving his area mm. uh, uh, space. And then obviously I believe that Jordan Rose he's got fantastic movement yes. and he will he will express yes. himself in that yes. in that hole. Yes. So you know Pookie is, is going to be a how very did, very interesting. How did those piece. two link up against yeah, West Brom? Brilliant, I very very. Because at Birmingham, I, I looked at the Pookie Rose partnership and I thought. This is nice because mm, yeah. Nelson well, Oliveira was so isolated last season. He yeah. wasn't connecting with the midfield at all. Pookie, he is bringing Jordan Rhodes in really nicely. He's feeding off the passes from mm. midfield. I think it's perfect. I think last year the point with the ad is Oliveira was dropping too yeah. deep. Yeah. Yeah. Really, and, really. and there was no rollers behind. So they couldn't stretch the pitch. <laughs> this year, if you look, Jordan Rhodes is running behind, he's running left, he's running right, yeah. he's walking the back foot yeah. all the time. He always, mm. you, know, you know, sometimes he's not, you know, strikers, it's not about how many goals they will score in the season, it's about the work rate they generate on, on the game. And Jordan Rhodes has generated immensely hard work in the last two games. But they're both smart. But it's what, I'm saying. it's what I'm saying is Jordan Rose is running behind yes, and Pookie's yes, dropping in the yes, hole. Yes. Then Pookie's running behind and Jordan is, is, is dropping in the hole. He's, he's always someone in that pocket there. And it's very, very difficult to, to, to defend. The thing that surprised me most about Pookie, he's very good with his feet. Like On the turn you mentioned there, there was a lot of times when he was receiving the ball and he had a defender very close and he was turning them. Yeah. And like you say, I, I've been very impressed with Rose and you know I'm eating my words on that already. Another player will add into that who benefited from space against Birmingham and also West Brom Hernandez yeah. so much space yesterday and boy does he use it well he's been unbelievable so far Mate, if I was to pick bones I would actually say that we're not feeding the ball to, to Hernandez enough you know. I'm I, sure I, that will I, come absolutely it def- no, no, it definitely will come 100% that's the only negative I, I heard um, the, the radio commentary um, against West Brom um, obviously I was there at Birmingham and I'm, and I'm witnessing that when Hernandez gets the ball shit happens yeah. it goes down we make stuff happen yes his final product needs work but for me as Cedric said his penetration is fantastic he just goes straight in and he's not messing around he's not he's not he's not he's, <laughs> he's not afraid he's not afraid to to, to, to try it. even if he, he, he do wrong yeah. he try back yeah you know Yesterday, a great example in the second half. Unbelievable. He, he, he was playing on the left-hand side and he chased all across yes, the pitch yes, to tackle yes, and win yes. a free kick yes. when all the fans lifted and applauded. Yeah. That's what the fans want to mm. see. Yes. And then yes. And, and, and the, we see some glimpse of, of on, uh, Hernandez last year when he came on. He was a bit timid, a bit shy. Mm. He was running everywhere mm. and nowhere. Mm. He was like, you could see he had something. This yeah. year, he's, he's adding a bit more quality mm. on, on the 1v1 with the fullbacks. Mm. He's adding some... Mm. Creativity crossing in the box, and he's adding goals as well. Don't you think his confidence is up as yeah. well from last season? But I could just see just his stance, his body language on the pitch, the way he's looking for options. He seems like he's almost been given a little bit more freedom by Daniel mm. Farker from last season, well, which it, I think it's, will work well. It's, it's few times in the last two games you can see that he's standing on the left hand side, mm. and sometimes in the game he drifts himself on the right hand yeah. side and he keeps swooping. That last year Murphy was staying on the left hand side, and mm. that's it. Yeah, with Otisha, there's a lot more rotation. You know, it's more freedom of the players. You, yeah. look, you look Jordan Rhodes, as I said, he dropped in that hole, Pookie run mm-hmm. behind and, and vice versa. Um, but as what I'm saying, Hernandez, he, he could be the one this year that last year was he was Madison. This year, if he had, if he had goals like he mm-hmm. did against Birmingham, he, he would be a great, a great asset for the, for the team. Um, right, next question from Matt Sales, who was always um, Go on, chipping Matt. in with question. Thank you, Matt, for, for ans- uh, asking some questions. Now, Cedric, we'll start with you here. A, a player we've just mentioned, Nelson Oliveira, yeah. still doesn't have a club, still an Orange City player. It's clear that Daniel Farker doesn't want him in and around the squad. What do you think was going to happen with him? I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, obviously, him being in, in, in Norwich, being obviously in the squad, he, he gives that strength into the squad. But knowing he's not going to play that many games, um, you know, obviously for me, Oliver just shot, shot himself in the foot last year when starting the, the the new fixture against Fulham away. He scored obviously, yeah, but you don't need to disrespect the manager showing your name in front of million of 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 people. And even obviously during the season, obviously they they, they had some issue between them too. Um, 
Olivera honestly for me is not a a team player. He's more uh, an individual. Mm-hmm. Last year he wanted to make a, a point to prove it. Yeah. The World Cup was coming up. He wanted to be part of the Portuguese uh, squad. He didn't make it. He didn't have a great season. He was playing for himself. You know, we see so many times last year when he yeah. was dropping in a hole, turning and striking for yeah. forty yards, was he got different option and better option. Yes, you can argue with me. He gave us the point when we went to uh, Wolves and drew and drew two two and yeah. scored the last second. But of the whole, you know, the the forty five games he's played or whatever, how many games he's played, he has not given us what jo- Jordan Rose is giving us, what Pookie yeah. is going to give us, and other players was going mm. to give us. Um, yeah, completely agree. Chris Nelson, I think I think the actual. Do you think that? Well, I certainly think he shouldn't be in the team first and foremost, yeah. and I certainly don't think he should be on the bench. But now, Norwich City, Daniel Farker, Stuart Webber, we've now got a problem on our hands mm. and on our books because. He's on higher wages than most of the other players, reportedly. But also, he's a character. Yeah. He's not the type of guy that's just going to sit there with his feet up, smoking a cigar, doing bugger all. He's going to want to try and prove a point. He's going to keep acting like he's acting at Fulham because that's the only way he gets a response from his manager. So now Norwich City have got an issue. We must offload him in January. But to who? Well, we could and still offload only... him now. But, but, but the problem is, mate, is that Norwich City aren't in position to make a financial cut. So to sell him, we're going to have to possibly even play him. So f- for me, if I'm Daniel Farker, he's my cup striker. Yeah. And I know that's and I know Daniel Farker loves the cup, but I think Norwich City need to sell Nelson Oliveira. But to sell him, you're not going to sell him when he's not in the team. You're just not he, going for, to. For me, you know, I've obviously I've been a player, and you know, you can see in the changing room. If you're not playing, you're going to create issues in yes, the sport. Yes, yes, yes. And, and then you could see that in Oliveira's attitude, his character. Maybe you know, we don't know how he trained during the week. Maybe he don't give it hundred percent. Maybe he's like dropping his hand. Maybe he's trying to argue with everyone. Mm-hmm. You don't want that because obviously, at the end of the day. If he acts like, like that, the first person who's going to lose his job will be Daniel Farker. Mm. And Daniel Farker is there to build something. It's been said from the, the day one with Stuart Weber, mm. we want him because he's, he's got philosophy that we think that can be at Norwich City. But if he's got a player who's got an issue with it, it's going to be difficult. And as I, I'm Chris, you know, I agree with Chris, we probably need to release him or sell him as quick as possible. You, you see two examples of, of players... One obviously better than the other. Do you see Nelson Oliveira bring bring his his friends and family sitting in the away end, and you know now so Russell Martin, Norwich City legend. Whether you like him or not on the pitch, he is a Norwich City legend. He deserves to be one as well. Being at the, at the club forever and a day, very good reputation with everyone around the football club for, for being a prof- an, and you know a professional. Team. He's been isolated by the manager. You know he has been disrespected by the manager as well as a, as a long serving player. I don't I don't listen to any of the stuff that Danny Farker says about Russ in the media because I just personally think it's wrong. Now Russ is turning up to the away game. He's starting Norwich chants. He's getting in amongst the fans, but he's being a professional. I also saw this with John Ruddy. I'm not sure if anyone saw the 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 BT Sport interview with him um, for, the, for the first game that Wolves played in the Premier League. John Ruddy coming out on BBC Sport and being professional. So not only has he got more of a chance of being in the Wolves team if the goalkeeper gets injured, but also another club's going to look at him and say, actually, you know what, I've got a chance. So what Cedric said is bang on the money. Nelson Oliveira has shot himself in the foot and he will continue to shoot himself in the foot, which will hurt a lot, because not only will he not get in the Norwich team, he'll struggle to find another club as well. The, 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 other, the other argument we can, we, we can add is, is also when Daniel Farker just said he's got a system how to play and Oliveira play, start mm. 11. But when the manager is telling his tactics before the game and he wants Oliveira here and he wants to do that and this and that, Oliver, Oliveira will probably do nothing of what the manager yeah, is doing. Yeah, so And, agree and that. that would cause a lot of issues in the team. Mm. Uh, a player will probably start to detach himself from him. He will, he, he, Oliveira will be pushing himself away from the squad and that, will, as I say, is, is, is difficult. I'm just going to throw a scenario out, Chris. We can still sell to clubs in Europe, just not in England, it's all very confusing this yeah. year. If a club from I don't know Italy or somewhere comes in and yeah. says one and a half million for Nelson, do, you, do we sell him? Wages off yes. the books, yeah, yeah. I think that we take the financial hit. I think that we've been stung. You know, we've been stung before by the likes of Leroy Fur, Ricky Van Walswinkel, Stephen Naismith, Kyle Lafferty. 
you know, I, I think that Norwich City need to learn from those mm. and need to think actually, what are the chances of Nelson playing the odd cup game, impressing enough to get a big, you know, a bigger move? I still don't think we spent a ton of. I don't think we over. I don't think we ever paid for him. I thought no. that that was his market value at the time. But yeah, for me, I would, I would, I would take the financial um, risk and try to cut it short yeah. and get him out as soon as possible. Yeah, who, who would like to have a striker if he's a grump all the time? Well, that's the thing because the, f- the football world is so small world. Yeah, it's easy to pick up the phone and ring. But about Oliveira and Nigel said, yeah, great, great, great talent, bad attitude. People don't want to have a bad attitude in their squad, mm. you know. Mm. And 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 have we? Have we ever received any offer from Oliver in the transfer? I've heard nothing. Mm, very, so, very good point. Very so, good point. So that is that is the other issue. There mm. is he is the other club called Norwich and sort of trying to 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 um, to take in, you know to, to get some information from Oliver or is actually the Norwich City calling other other clubs saying look we got great striker there. But I suppose on the on the on the other end this time last year. We were turning down twelve million pound bids from Swansea and raving about him after a fantastic start to the season. Yeah. So, if you can get Nelson in that headspace, I think he could be one of the best strikers. He's got the league. talent, but it is get, getting him in that headspace. Jack, it's too late. It's too late. It's done. No, it's I'm, done. Ju- I'm just saying another club might be able to do that. Oh yeah, yeah right. Okay, I thought but, you meant no, no, at no. Norwich. But the pattern of his career shows that he but can't. How many it. clubs he had before he went to join Norwich? Yeah, well, that's the thing. The pattern exactly. of his career is his, yeah. his, his attitude is not right for the game. Brilliant. Let's move on. Saluting Shrebeni back again. <laughs> um, he's saying, "What player do you think could really surprise us this season?" In brackets, definitely not hinting anything with that gif of the lovely goal that Dennis Shrebeni scored against. Sam Johnston at Aston Villa last season. The flute um, where it went through his legs. <laughs> Dennis Trebeni, he's been. I don't even himself. remember his goal. I remember, um, I remember Murphy's goal against Aston Villa. Mm. You can't remember. Let me show you Trebeni. It was a beautiful ball over his shoulder, lovely little volley into the bottom corner. Yeah, a volley. Yeah. It's he's been impressive so far this season. So far, he, he, on the second goal against Birmingham, he he he, he won the ball in midfield. Mm. He passed two players, mm. and he, he had that composure. To release the right ball at the right time mm. for Hernandez. Hernandez have to do the, the harder thing is to have a great first touch mm-hmm. to bring him in the one v one with the keeper and have that sort of that freshness to just you know tap in and, and, and put the ball in the net. Strabeni is doing exactly what I want him to do right now, which is second best number one because he ain't the best player on the pitch, so he should start on the bench. But he's coming on and he's trying to prove a point. We saw that against Birmingham. He came on with fire in his belly. As Cedric said, he's he's nudged he's nudged off a couple of challenges. He's gone away from a slide challenge before he's perfectly mm. fed in Hernandez. That's exactly what we need him to come on mm. and do. And long may it continue because let's not forget, let's bring this right back down to reality. Fourth division German player. Fourth division German player. So my expectancy of Shrebeni is bugger all. Mm. I expect it to be bugger all. But if he comes on this season and can contribute like that, then long may it continue. What's the question? Um, um, a player, well, the player that could surprise us this season. I think it's I think it's Puki. I think yeah. you draw it right back to Puki. And what yeah. I love what I love about Puki is no one knows anything. Yeah. Like honestly, let's let's be realistic. Not only do Nor- Norwich fans know bugger all about him, but the opposition they will do their research, of course. But we don't really know him. He's new to the English league. He's new in terms of what he can bring, and also. I would say that what he's bringing to Norwich, he's probably not brought to other teams, which is why mm. he wasn't successful mm. there. Mm. I, I don't think he was played in this position at Celtic, which is why he's uh, well, he's able to offer more straight mm. away. So for me, Timo Puki, um, and actually I, I go back to your your initial statement about Hernandez being the player of the season, Jack. I, I think that you know he's of course he's expected to be, mm. but I think he will definitely be the player of the season there. Good. Bristol Rovers polls back again. They oh. missed the last podcast. It's good to see Bristol Rovers polls back. I'm not sure who they played yesterday, but I hope Bristol Rovers had a really good result. Um, they've asked, would you still have? Would Declan Rudd be number one if he was still at the club? In, in t- save the penalty yesterday. In, in T squad, yeah, I would probably think I would probably say yes. Better than Tim Krul. Um, could be a it could be an argument there, but Declan Rudd is is a local lad. He's he had a full experience now. You know when he was in Norwich, he was sent on loan to Charlton. Mm. I I think he could be the number one here if he was still at the club. Yes, and uh, to be honest, if he was still at the club, as an uh, you know, I don't think the 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 the, the club will have gone to uh, uh, sign Tim Cole. Really yeah. interesting. I think I think Declan was really unlucky, wasn't he? He had that spell in the Premier League where he didn't do overly well, and that was kind and of his chance. He played Chelsea, Arsenal, Man U, Man City, and everyone slated him. Oh, so you're saying yeah. that Declan Rudd should still be here then? No, 
Definitely not saying no. that, Jack. Absolutely not. Okay. I'm saying that his chance mm. was Came against the top time. four yeah. teams yeah. Yeah. in the Premier League. That was his chance. If his chance would have come in the Championship. I think Declan Rudd is in the same boat as Remy. I'm just going to put that brush on him. I'm sorry. Unlucky. I just think... I think he's a local lad. I think he's good enough to be a number one. But is he good enough to be a number one at Norwich? I don't know. It's, it's tough because he's such a good lad. I think he... I agree with Cedric. He could be the Norwich City number one. But I just don't think Stuart Webber... And, you know, the footballing people at our club trust those keepers, unfortunately. Yeah, but Norwich always, always have a good goalkeeper. Yeah. Always. Absolutely. I agree. Cool. Let's move on. Luke Speck. Um, question for the lads. Have we actually improved from this time last season? If so, where's the evidence? Same amount of points as this time last season. Yeah, true. We got the same point, but we scored more goals. Uh, we're more entertaining. Uh, but that doesn't translate to success, does it? No, true. But the, the quality that uh, Daniel Falk has been able to uh, gain in a, in a transfer market this summer, that is uh, definitely a positivity because we, we mentioned early, mm. uh, the quality he's bringing to the club is much, much better than we had last year. He's got more competition in each, each position. Mm. He can sort of play players in different positions and player who can do the job. Mm. Um, and as I said, last year was probably for me, even I love Madison, he was a one-man show player. Yeah. He was he was well above everyone technically, mm. but this, this year technically everyone is good in a different area of, of each position. Okay. Yeah. You've seen improvement. No, no, I think I think Cedric's bang good. on. I'm nothing to add. Um, there was a, oh, the, the, we're going to end here with um, a question from the gatekeeper, and he asks oh, what? Sorry? the gatekeeper. He calls himself. Okay. Um, he asks Cedric, was it you in Spixworth that used to order a copy of La Monde every day? Le Monde? Yeah. No. Le Monde? No. No? Is that a, news, a French newspaper? A newspaper, yeah. So there's someone in Spixworth <laughs> reading Le Monde on the daily. Yeah, probably, I don't know where he's going to find Le Monde, but I, I've not <laughs> found Le Monde in Spixworth. I don't know which Spixworth he's mean, he, he mean to, but... Different. Well, I, I think... I, th- I assume the gatekeeper owns a shop. And Basically, there's, been ordering. there's barely anyone French here, so we're just immediately drawing <laughs> to you, Cedric. Are you the culprit? To be, no, no, to be honest, I, I've never seen Le Monde newspaper around yeah. here. I think... Uh, but Why would I, you? The EDP, well, of course. Well, yeah, no, exactly. But when I moved to Norwich uh, uh, in 1999, obviously, I used to read a lot of obviously, French uh, magazines and uh, football magazines, uh, like a 442. And, uh, what type of magazines did you read, Cedric? Uh, football magazine. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure. Yeah. Diet magazine. Um, but no, I, I, I used to um, read a lot of uh, French magazines, and I used to actually had to order some magazine in London to send it to me, because you can only find them... In London. in London, yeah, because it's a lot of big community of French pe- French pe- people in in London, so it was easy for me to contact a a you know shop and they used to send it to me. I think it really that actually I want to chuck in just another question that's just come to, to the top of my head, Cedric. Is just a word from you on on how impressive it is to go from one country to another, learn a language take instructions and try to talk to fans, try to talk to people where their main language is English. I think that Norwich, Norwich fans take this for granted. I, I look at not only, you know, Leitner, for example, okay, tribal, for example, you know, their main language is German and they're having to take on a new language and play football and play in a new system and play in a league above. Mm. I, I think it'd be interesting to get your thoughts. I mean, how it was for you, first and foremost, but also... What, what sort? How difficult is it to it, learn a new language and play football? It is difficult. You know, when I moved to Norwich, I was I was a young boy. You know, mm. I was very young. Um, you know, you have to understand it's a different culture. It's mm. Everything is different. You know, uh, uh, just like a, a, a simple things that when you actually take your car and you go on the road, you you drive on the left hand side. In Germany, you're driving on on the right hand mm. side. In France, we're driving on the right hand side. You know, everything is different. The mm. language is different. So, it's very hard. Because you have to keep your focus in training mm. and trying to understand what the manager is saying. For the German players in this squad, it's a lot more easy because their manager can also speak German. Mm-hmm. So if they don't understand something, True. they can be translating or can go to their manager and say, I don't understand that, can you translate that or can you speak in German to me? Mm-hmm. So it's easy. For me, when I moved in England, I was first, I was the only French player. <laughs> Secondly, I had... Brian Hamilton, where he was, you know, Irish, <laughs> and Bruce York, where he was Scottish. So two different sort of accents, and I was completely lost uh, in, in, in my, my first time alone. But 
because I, I loved Norwich, I felt so comfortable straight away and I wanted to be part of that culture. I wanted to learn. Mm. I wanted to, 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 to make the first step and, and, and trying to see people. And mm. even if your English is not so good, you will have people who correct you. Mm. Yeah. And it's how you, you learn. You know, I was, I was reading a lot of newspapers because reading newspaper, even if I don't understand the sentence of it, you, you pick up some words. And, yeah. and, and, and after you start to understand the, mm. the, the, the words, um, but I remember I was I was living at, at the time it was the Post House Hotel on Ipswich Road. I was based there when I sent for Norwich, and I used to come down to the ki- um, to the um, restaurant with my uh, my uh, French dictionary, <laughs> English French dictionary, to understand what was on the menu. So I was like, well, mm. you can I have that, that, and that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, because you know, but but first night out, where obviously the player organized a, a night out, uh, I went to the cash point. And I was trying to take, I was trying to take, obviously, I think it was uh, 20 pound or 40 quid and, and had him to take out 400 pound. <laughs> <laughs> because here in the, is in the sterling, one I leave from was still in franc. Uh, so, the, 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 you know, the, um, I don't know, you call it, um, you know, 10 pounds. Yeah, so the exchange rate Yeah, the exchange rate yeah. completely different. <laughs> Takes so 400 a, pounds. Well, you had a great night out then, Cedric. <laughs> well, no, I kept that for the week. <laughs> <laughs> See, but this is the thing, right? All I'm trying to add is just another yeah. thing to be you know appreciative of, of is the fact that our foreign players are having to spend more time I know they're footballers I know they live the luxury life but they've got to teach themselves English yeah. as well and yeah. that is still even in this day and age with the translator that's still even, hard even, so. even, even for me now I've been what, I've been coming to 20 years in, in, in England it's, it's still difficult sometimes you know when when you are tired when you had a bad day or you you know, you switched off and... Especially on Canary Call, with those yeah, Norfolk accents. But this is what I'm trying to explain, you know, for me to do the Canary Call or even to come and take the games, you know, English is not my first language. Mm. Even if I've been here 20 years, it's still difficult, mm. you know, uh, to try to explain uh, on the radio for the people who listen, it's almost like you're trying to bring the game in front of them in a TV, but through the radio, mm. about the way you describe the game, how you an, uh, analyse the game. And sometimes it's very difficult. You do a mighty fine job, though, Cedric. Thank you. A mighty you should fine take job. Chris Gorham over to France and get him to comment out. But this is what oh, I'm saying. Is, it, this, this is what I'm saying. is people who listen to the radio, sometimes you, know, you, you, you are open to criticise. Mm. You know? But at the end of the day, I am, I am French. Mm. I, I am no English. So you know, I'm not trying to find myself some excuses there. But it's, 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 it's tough. tough. It's tough. Yeah, yeah. Shocking excuse, Cedric. Get you out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, let's look ahead to what's going to be a very busy week for Norwich City. It's kind of, we're getting into proper championship routine mm. now. Le- League Cup game on Tuesday night against Stevenage. Saturday away at Sheffield United. Let's start at Stevenage, Chris. Um, first, we, we, we know that Daniel Farker takes his cup competition seriously, but you've got the likes of Louis Thompson, even Adam Either from the, from the under 23s. They'll be looking at this as an opportunity, Godfrey. Um, to really impress and get in the first team, won't they? I, I play mainly a second choice team, right. except from the players that need minutes. Tim Krull being an example. Okay. Mm. I would start Tim Krull because he needs minutes under his belt. He needs to get back to, to where he was when he was playing for Newcastle. But apart from that, I definitely bring in players like Godfrey. I definitely bring in players like Thompson. Um, and again, going back to Nelson, I, I'd maybe consider... Um, the, but I think what you'll find is, I think he'll try to to at this stage of the season keep the same team ish mm. and the players for example Tete you could you could quite comfortably drop him but bring Godfrey in just to give him some game time yeah. knowing that Tete will be able to smash it against Sheffield United but uh, obviously you can have Mario Francic if he's, he's fit enough to have some minutes uh, Jamal mm. as well Lewis yeah. Yeah. some minutes yeah. you know uh, is it Paslak or Hashlak? Paslak yeah. Paslak he, he probably going to be involved and get mm. some minutes yeah. you know you got a lot of players mm. that can, can potentially play tomorrow and, and get some minutes and, and that would give you a bit more sort of like um, um, headache for the manager because yeah. everyone will bring some minutes yeah. and everyone will be in the same level fitness wise mm. but we have to we have to think about Sheffield United I hope Daniel Farker doesn't get ahead of himself too much because with no disrespect to Stevenage they're Stevenage and not Birmingham or Birmingham <laughs> but Stevenage are Stevenage as well right Sheffield United is such a big game for Norwich City. The fans want it more. I mean, I look, I'm not going to, you know, lie. I really want to beat Sheffield United this year. I really want to beat them because they re- not as a club, but Chris Wilder really really Brexit, annoyed me. He's he, honestly, skin. oh, absolutely. Absolutely. He's not just on my under my skin either. 
I'd love to beat them and therefore we need to be careful with our team selection against Stevenage mm. because we'll need everything we've got and then some because Sheffield United are that typical gritty team in the championship that work yeah. hard they'll win everything in the air I was con- here's another thing I was concerned about with West Brom which Michael Bailey highlighted our aerial duels won mm. barely anything was that because Tom Tribal wasn't in midfield I think so so those are things that we need to consider going into the Sheffield United game which is way 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 bigger than a cup game against Stevenage. I, I agree with your 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 um your, you know you have to spawn on even with Michael Bell you obviously mentioned the the physic physicality of, of players of West Brom. Even when, when I sort of went in a stand and sat down and see the, the warm up of West Brom and wow they're they're big they're mm-hmm. yeah. strong and physical and tough. But the way now which you conduct themselves in the first half, moving the ball quickly on the floor, it, they have caused them a lot of problems because mm-hmm. you can be big, tall, and sometimes you can be too static, mm-hmm. you know, and, 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 and now which sort of absolutely destroyed them, I would say, in the first half. Secondly, West Brom came out and used their physicality, their power, squeeze quickly with aggressivity the, the Norwich player, and obviously, they are good on set pieces, and you know we see the four the four goals. I mean, Cedric, you're going to be commentating on BBC Radio Norfolk alongside yeah. Chris Gore of the Stevenage game. What are you expecting to see in terms of the style in which we play? Do you think it'll be very similar? Do you think this is a good chance to just bed in that that style that we've I, seen so far, or I, something I, a little bit different? I think Daniel Farker has got a system that he wants to stick with, and yeah. he, as I said, he's got he's got more players to to fit in the system that last year he was trying to change the system to to um, to help the player he had and mm. he had to do that at some stage last year because he went from a 4-2-3-1 and, mm. and if I remember he changed completely everything he went 3 at the back 4 and 3 yeah. against Chelsea yeah. with probably with no striker mm. so he, for me that he, he, he understand the game he understand the players got and the system that he had to fit and suit the players he's got this year he's got more understanding more quality players to fit in the system he wants to play again you know, we might see Oliveira tomorrow, but if he, Oliveira is playing, I don't think he will be able to play a four-two-three-one. Mm. Mm, true. Very so true. he will have to change the system slightly tomorrow to help Oliveira to to fit into that that that, that game. Definitely, tomorrow. Cedric. Um, Chris, let's move on to Saturday's game. Sheffield United. It is a big one. You go there and you lose. <laughs> you know, winning three things start to get a little bit. Oh, I don't know what's going on yeah. here. Win there. Season turns, happy days. Yeah, yeah we won there last year. Um, yeah. We all know who scored that. Now at Bolton, doing very well. Um, <laughs> look, we all knew that you, because we got beat up after the game for no reason. Are you yeah. confident? Yeah, Norwich fans got beat up. Yeah. Are you oh. confident going into this or? or, or no, 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 no. Despite no, no. the fantastic start that you're saying we've had to the season. Uh, am I saying that? Did I say that? Well, certainly improved. I think, I think the performances have been good. But despite the performances, you're not confident. No, I'm not because yeah. I think Sheffield United are the team that Norwich City will come up against this season where we'll struggle. Why? Yeah, because but... they're big. They're physical. You look at Borough. So we've had no improvement since last season then in, in that. I love how you're drawing conclusions. No, I'm just saying. Him. I'm just saying. I'm worried there's been about, such an improvement. Mate, I'm worried about Sheffield United because we wound them up last season. There is a bit of fire in there. Yeah. And I just I, I look at... I see Sheffield United as a team where we'll just... I, I'm just worried because I want to beat them so much. Yeah, but you, we are in exactly the same position that we were last year when we had to go to Sheffield United. Yeah, where, true. Very where, true. We, we had a bad bad few games. We lost a couple of games. Yeah, true. We went to Sheffield United in the back of losing so many games mm. and we went away, we won one another. Yeah. So no, it's it, true. It's you know, true. The, the championship, um, you know, everyone can beat everyone. Yeah. It's, 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 it's that simple. You know, you can be bottom three and play the top three and beat the top three. Like last year, we, we beat Bo, we beat, uh, yeah. you know, uh, we went to draw Wolves away. Mm. You know, we went, uh, you know, we, we had so many, we had a better game when we played the top three. Yeah, actually. agreed, agreed. Uh, you know, that is what's the beauty of the championship is you don't know week in, week out what is the result. But the only thing, and I agree with you, Cedric, but I don't think Sheffield United are in that bracket of teams that will play football. Like Leeds United will play well against them because they play football. Yeah. Sheffield United, yes, they play football. All right, fair play. But as I say, they're in that nitty gritty just on the cusp of the playoffs where they'll buff you off the ball, they'll do things nasty, they'll waste time if they have to, they'll yeah. headbutt you if you have to, their fans will beat you up if they have to. You know, they're that type of team that you just don't want to play against. Preston are kind of similar. You know, that that, that sort of team where they're... they're... Yeah, I would say Millwall. Well, yeah, look, no, there you go. There's another one, right? So yes, Norris City play against the teams that play football that are, that are very good mm. at it. Yeah? 
and we're probably poor against the teams that try to just buff, up, buff, buff us with the ball. But this kind of middle of the range, Sheffield United, don't like that. But we we need to see, and and, and we actually done okay against teams in some of the games where we got buffed off the ball last year. But Cedric, I'm praying that we've learned from mistakes against the likes of Millwall last season where they went long and direct and, and smashed us. I'm praying we go to Sheffield United and and and, you, and just deal with it. You know, I, I as I said. Daniel Farker is in a much better position than he were last year because he, he had his first yes. year behind championship level. He understand how the team the position play. Millwall, when we, we went away, lost 4 0. He was not prepared mm-hmm. to have a team play a 4 4 2, being solid, making low runners behind, long ball, direct ball, being physical. I don't think he prepared his team well because I don't think he had a backup to understand the English football in that level. Mm-hmm. He's got a more understanding of opposition now maybe so much about Blackburn and the other you know get up because he, I don't know if he's been looking at League One football but he, he's got a lot more understanding now mm. yeah and, and I think that will help him to set up his players and make his players in the best confidence you know enough to, to compete against a team like you said the Sheffield United Millwall mm. Uh, them kind of games where it's going to be tough. And what kind of setup are you hoping we go at Sheffield United? A midfield that we saw at Birmingham or a. Yes. A, you're, you're hoping for that? Absolutely, oh. because I think that we absolutely have to have strength in there. Um, you know, I, don't get me wrong, I do want Lightner to start games of football, but against teams like Sheffield United, I just think that we could potentially do with a tribal in there mm. just to try and be a bit more defensive about it, try and compete in the first half try to do things the nasty way if we have to I think that that's essential against teams like uh, you know Sheffield United yes still have that creative outlet of, of Hernandez out wide um, but but for me I just think we need to make sure that we compete and not get overrun in midfield and I think that we could potentially do that against Sheffield United but the only reason why I care so much is that it's so early on in the season and it is a big game because Cedric's right and you know I am going to keep banging the drum every single podcast Daniel Farker hasn't got any excuses this season. And and so far, two games, yeah, obviously we've only had one point from. We've played some nice stuff, but Sheffield United is a, is a different game. It's a big game. Mm. I don't see kind of... I know they're all big games, but do you get what I'm going? Yeah, yeah. I just think that Sheffield United, there's a bit of something in it. And, and it's the kind of game where you can look at it, like Cedric said, and you say, has he learned from last season? As you said, Jack, if we come away from that game with a win, everyone everyone is on board with it. Everyone's up for it. If we lose, you're thinking, oh, my God, we've not learned. The moaners start to creep in again. And then when the moaners creep in, they grab some of the positive people and drag them under as well. So for me, I'm just nervous about the game mm-hmm. because there is a lot more weighing on it than, a, than at first glance, in my opinion. Mm. Cedric, score prediction? Uh, tomorrow night or Saturday? Both. <laughs> <laughs> I would say 3-1 for Norwich tomorrow night. Good. Or oh, uh, Tuesday night, sorry. And uh, I would say a 1-0 win for Norwich. Who's scoring? Oh, I love Who's that scoring? I would say uh, Jordan Rhodes. Lovely. I'll take that. Chris? I'd love Jordan Rhodes to score. You know it would be great. Pookie, isn't it? Nice little Pookie goal. By the way, Pookie won into his um, 10 goals of yeah. the season, of course, for Tom Huckabee to get a tattoo of Timmy Pookie <laughs> on his backside. Look forward to seeing that. Um, nine more to go, Tom. Time is ticking. Um, I think we'll win 4-0 against Stevenage right. I certainly think we'll keep a clean sheet and because um, I, I think I just think we'll play a strong team Sheffield United um, I would take a draw and I think it will be a draw and I do think we'll still leak goals so I'm going for a Desmond Desmond 2-2 lovely we'll take that Cedric thank you so much for well, coming on you. mate thank genuine you pleasure as thank always you. au revoir, au revoir. Um, merci. merci so subscribe to us on YouTube if you haven't already and also iTunes or wherever you subscribe to on podcasts um, go and follow Cedric on Twitter links in the description and, and Instagram he's very motivational Instagram you are no I do love get Instagram get on that for some motivation and, uh, and if you don't want to brave a Tuesday night against Stevenage BBC Radio Norfolk Cedric will be co-commentator here them dulcet French tones once more. See you later. See you later.